Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a Wizzy 111 Model 5A, the Tier 10 Chinese Heavy Tank. It's located on the Eastbourne of Berlin Encounter. Oh, that aircraft crashing again. And this one is under the command of Captain Ashstorm. Yes, he's uh, got over his bout uh, with uh, COVID-19 and he's now convalescing at home playing World of Tanks. Best thing to do. Having a bit of fun. Well, he's top tier in this game, tier 10, and it's a tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks in it, so he is going to be expected to carry most of the load, I think. He's got a 122mm gun, it's, you know, it's the 13cm gun, what am I saying? Yes, uh, Wizzy 111 Model 5 has had 13cm, like the Object 277, capable of doing 490 alpha and penetrating 250mm with standard and with the Heat rounds, he'll go through 340mm. He's loaded up with plenty of heat and he'll need it if he's going to do damage to the enemy. The first opponents to come into sight, they're tier 8s and tier 9s. The IS-3-2 with the double barrel. Oh, IS-3's turned up. Puts one into him. Well, it is an encounter game and somebody in the enemy team has managed to get into the uh, the bunker, which is right in the centre of the cap circle, but we've got our guys on the outside, so he's not going to be going very far, but uh, from that position he actually does have shots of some of our guys in, the, um, in this gap here, just ahead of us. And if Captain Ashton was to go through the gap, there's a very good chance that he might get shot in the side by that guy in the bunker. It's an Object 140, Soviet medium in there, tier 10, so yeah, he's probably got a very good gun and Captain Ashton's a bit reluctant to actually push out, but that Object 140 hasn't got much health and, oh, he's gone. Okay, so he has been killed now and we're now capping, so he's safe to cross. Okay, we've got a 50 TP, tier 9, didn't get that one in. I think it was the angle more than anything to stop that one going in. The 50 ton is the tier 9 Polish tank. Okay, he's trying to get the right angle, get the hitbox. Yes, he got it this time, but he took a round from the IS-3 too. And luckily, it was only one shell that he fired, not two. And his teammate in the Maelstrom is telling him full back on this occasion. And luckily, he avoided a shot from 50 TP. The Maelstrom is going to go ahead. In fact, the Maelstrom is his platoon mate. He's going to have a, a few shots. Okay, go for the cupola. Easiest penetration. Yes! Perfect! A high roll as well. 532. That guy's out the game. Okay, it makes it easier for the Martian to then pick the next one. He gets the IS-32. Now, Captain Ashram could turn to his left. There's a T-30 there. There's also an AMX-5100. We're stopping this... Uh, I think there's a, was a type actually coming through behind us. Type 61, he's decided to go the other way round. Ah, oh, there's a Panzer Kampfer from Seb Sieben just around the corner. Now that's tier 10. Yeah, I think he needs to pull back as well now. And Captain Ashton has been Amaract. He was Amaract earlier. And by the IS-3, I think it was. Yes, gets it. The T-30's down. That's a high roll again. Sees the Panzer Kampfer and Sieben and actually bounces around from him. 560 missed there. That's good. In fact, he's pulled back to reload because he's got a very long reload. And the AMX 5100 is behind that building. So he's going to have to go around to try and get at one of them. And he's decided he's going to go for the Panzer 7. Now, oh, enemy RT has been spotted way over in the distance. Yes, nice hit, 480, but a low roll, which means that that guy's still alive. He's still alive with 30 hit points. If he got a high roll, that one would have been dead, but he's now running. The Object 261's on the move. I think he suddenly realised his position was a bit too prominent, a bit too out in the open. And unfortunately, Captain Ashstorm had a, a, a heat round loaded at the time, so he had to waste the heat round on hitting somebody who had no armour. 
and uh, would have been easy to take out with an AP or an HE round. Here comes the Panzer 7, aim for the shoulders, yes he did that perfectly, 589 high roll. He's working with the ST1 now, he's loaded, puts it through the lower plate actually, 549, it's another high roll. They are capping, but there's only one in the cap, and oh, we can't see the body. In fact, he aimed a little too low there. He could have gone for the Capola, and he actually took around in the tracks, which has immobilized him. And the T-30 deals with the Panzer VII, and he's out the game. But the scores are still even, so it's anybody's game. They've still got two RT, which are fairly close by, and are up guys could actually peel off to try and get them but instead we're chasing down this AMX 50. No he's running away as fast as he can he's got a barrasse for company and the Type 61 wasn't really watching what was going on and got in our way there. I think he might be bypassing this rampart and looking around the corner Okay, AMX 5100 has gone way south and the Barask is still with him. They were a little closer to us than to the AMX. And the enemy's still capping. They've got two in the cap now, so it might be worth our while actually going into the cap. Although, the worry is that Barask, because he's in a position where he can actually do damage. And we take a shell from the Carnarvon, but it's not a big shell. Only 253... He penetrates right through the frontal plate. You can see the heat round just had no trouble going through that frontal plate. And he's almost loaded. Is he going to go for the Capone or is he actually... No, he took another round from the Carnarvon with his high gun depression. He can easily get a shot in. But there we go. He's out the game altogether. But we lost another load of hit points from that shot. 213 from that shot. Leaving to uh, over 400 hit points in total. Lost... Okay, the Lynx is the one that's in there. He could have gone in for a ram, but the kill shot actually went to the Type 61. That means there's only two enemies left. The AMX 5100 and Attack Destroy, which is the T-30. The Barras was seen off and killed earlier. Oh, there's the T-30 and we're lucky he hit the tracks. Nat has actually gifted... Captain Ashstorm, the steel wall, which I'm sure he's very grateful to receive because it is a battle hero medal. He has blocked a huge amount of damage in this game, 1,180 already, over 11 shots. He's got 513 of spotting and 5k of actual damage. Just shows the power of this 13 centimeter gun with heat rounds. Okay, there's the T30. And a nice solid shot, but a low roll. Just we need one more through the side. Reload time just under 10 seconds. Right through the engine bay, please. And he does. He gets the fire. And he gets the kill as well, which means he's got the arsonist. Yep, there it is. And that was the last kill of the game. Which means victory. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats for this one. Well, it's a first-class tanker for Captain Ashstorm in the WYSI 111 Model 5A. He also got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly in this one. And he also got a sharpshoot for getting ten or more consecutive shots on the enemy. An arsonist for setting light to that T-30 and watching him burn. A duelist for taking down two tanks that damaged him. A fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. And a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get seven. He also picked up a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And a steel wall for blocking the most damage in this game. And his win 8 was 10,509. But I have the feeling he was a little bit disappointed that he only ended up with the first class tanker. Considering he did all the carrying in this game. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, considering it is the top 10 uh, or tier 10 Chinese heavy tank. Uh, in order for you to get an ace tanker, you have to be fighting against uh, solely nothing but enemy tier 10s as well. Otherwise, you're just not going to be earning enough XP from each shot to make it count. So, uh, uh, yeah, I go back to the drawing board. But more battles in the WYSI 111. And sooner or later, you'll get that game where it all clicks together and you can get the ace tanker. Let's have a look at team score. 
Easily the highest damage. He actually got 6,188 hit points of damage in that game. Uh, the next highest scorer had half as much of that. 3,014 3, hit points. And that was the T30 that he took down right at the end of the game. And 2,967 hit points went to the Conqueror Gun Carriage on his own team. So he was doing quite well. But still less than half the damage that Captain Ashton did. When it came to kills, he still had the highest number of kills. Four kills to him, three kills to the Conqueror Gun Carriage, two kills to the T-30, the ST-1, and the T-30 and Object 140 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's the only one to get over a 1,000 base, but that's not enough for an ace tanker. 1,182 went to Captain Ashdorm, 817 went to the Martian, his platoon mate, and 808 went to the SU-101. He fired 14 rounds in that game, got 14 direct hits. Every shot hit the target, but only 12 of them actually penetrated the target. Yeah, I'm afraid he did fire a couple of shots where he was just slightly aiming off where you'd normally expect to actually uh, put the shell. Uh, one of those was the 50 TP. He aimed just below the cupola instead of actually on the cupola. The shell would have easily gone straight through the cupola if he'd actually had it on target, but it was just slightly off on that occasion. 6,188 hit points of damage, or virtually all of it was at uh, sh close range. 480 was at uh, long range, and I think that was the shot on the T30 towards the end. It may have been. 11 shots received. Five of those were penetrations, six non-penetrations, and one hit by way of splash damage as well. And as a result, of course, that was enough to get the steel wall. 1,180 hit points of damage blocked by armor. Four enemy vehicles spotted, eight enemy vehicles damaged and four killed, 962 hit points of damage assistance, and he got 64 defense points by resetting the cap when he went into the bunker. He earned 92,739 credits from the game, got 50,000 for completing the mission and events, total 142,739. And despite the fact that he fired a huge amount of heat ammo during that game, he still ended up with a massive profit of 58,705 credits. He also picked up seven bonds and 1,773 XP times two for the first victory, 887 for completing the mission and events, and took away 4,433 experience points altogether. So I think there's more battles in line. I'm sure we're going to be seeing another one where he does get the ace tanker uh, in the WYSI 111 Model 5A, probably very soon. And uh, I also suspect it won't be long before we'll be seeing him getting marks of excellence on this vehicle as well. If you enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.